Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to see current affairs of 5th March 2024. So we are going to take daily edition of Hindu and we are going to pick out the articles which are important from our examination point of view. So there will be not more than 7 to 8 articles every day in your newspaper. So focus on those articles which are relevant from your examination point only. So don't waste your time in reading irrelevant articles and prelims is very much near. You have to focus more on revision. So if you focus more on revision like uh, that will be very helpful to retrieve the things that you already had read. Okay. And even with multiple uh, revisions, you will be also getting much more clarity on the topics. Right. So if you're reading for the first time, you will be generating your some dimensions. And if you're reading like third time and fourth time, then you will be getting much more insights into the topic. Okay. So to get conceptual clarity and to remember the facts for the long time, revision is key. Okay. Don't forget the revision. So if you're reading everything new every time means it is not at all useful. So even if you are reading little, so try to be thorough with that little content. Clear? Yeah, so this is the tip of the day. And now let us see the front page. So this is front page of Hindu. And there is one important Supreme Court judgment which is seen in news. And always the Supreme Court judgments are important from your polity point of view and even in your ethics point of view as well. So if you are getting any Supreme Court judgment, so there is a high chance of getting prelims and mains based question. So I will give you one example. So you may know about this right to privacy judgment. Yes or no? KS Puttuswami judgment. So there was twice the question asked in UPSC prelims paper about this right to privacy judgment. So because of this, whenever you are getting any Supreme Court judgment in news, so try to know which is that case and what is the judgment what it is related to right so these are the very important dimensions that you have to see so this is the first article in your front page which is important title says supreme court ends immunity for legislator taking bribes so the key word here is immunity and one important 25 years old judgment had been overturned that judgment is JMM bribery case judgment. Okay, so whenever you are getting this type of article, so whenever you are seeing this infographic, so if you see this infographic, you will be understanding about 80 to 90 percentage of articles and the crux of the article is given in this. So here you can see the title of this infographic says taking away privilege. So this privilege is very important from your polity point of view. So this is the keyword of this article actually. And a look at the observations made by seven judge bench of Supreme Court in its anonymous verdict. So JMM bribery case judgment of 1998 which is granting lawmakers immunity from prosecution for bribery had wide ramifications on public interest, profit in public life and parliamentary democracy. So here there are many keywords, okay, so I will let you know about the keywords, just zoom in. Yes, I hope you can see this infographic clear now, right? So these are the words, they are the keywords. So whenever I am coming up with personal mentorship for the students in this Rathod Sai's offline branch, so I'm, 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 I got a question from one student like, so whether there is a need of using of extraordinary English in writing answers. So extraordinary English is not at all important, but you have to use some keywords. For example, public interest, it is a keyword. And you can see profit in public life and parliamentary democracy. You have to use this type of heavy words. So they will be carrying the good meaning, right? So you have to use such a type of words. And whenever you are thoroughly reading newspaper, you will come across these keywords. So whenever you are writing answer, you have to incorporate this type of words like public interest, profit in public life, parliamentary democracy. So they are going to be affected because of this JMM bribery case judgment. Because it is providing 
law makers immunity so there will be no prosecution if they are going for this corruption and a claim of immunity should fulfill two fold test that is threatened to the collective functioning of house and it is necessary for the discharge of essential duties of legislator okay so whenever they are getting immunity means immunity from prosecution so it has to satisfy two important things so first one is they need immunity to discharge their duties okay so this is the thing which mainly said and offense of bribery is complete at the point when the legislator accepts the bribe okay so offense of bribery is nothing but whenever any legislator who is accepting the bribe then that will comes under this offense of bribery so these are the three important things which made by supreme court and this supreme court present judgment which had been overturned this 1998 judgment of this jmm bribery case yes now let us see the dimensions so this article is at most important from your gs paper 4 under gs paper 4 we have ethics integrity and aptitude okay so this is a first subject and second one is your gs paper 2 under polity and governance okay so this article is talking about jmm bribery case okay bribery case of 1998 so here what are the dimensions that you have to see so what are the dimensions right so let us see the dimensions one by one so first important dimension is you have to see the supreme court judgment that is old judgment in this case it is saying that yes legislator they will enjoy immunity okay so because of this supreme court judgment of 1998 it is affecting three important things that is public interest parliamentary democracy and probity in governance okay so these three are affecting and now you have to see what is a present supreme court judgment so present supreme court judgment said that there will be no immunity so there will be no immunity in this corruption or bribery case so this is a present context so i am getting lots of comments like you have to see the present context so here the present thing here is supreme court squash at the judgment of 1998 jmm bribery case so this is the present context and now let us see what are the dimensions that you have to see from polity you have to know what is this jmm bribery judgment so you can get a question like so recently jmm bribery judgment is in news what it is related to it is related to parliamentary privileges you have to remember this topic called as parliamentary privileges so regarding this parliamentary privileges so this judgment is related to so you have to know like what are this parliamentary privileges and even you have to remember like which are the articles like constitutional provisions talking about this parliamentary privileges so that's it from polity point of view and from governance point of view we are talking about here corruption and bribery okay so what are the laws or what are the acts which are present in india which talks about corruption and even we have some bodies like acbs like so what are the or which are the bodies which are dealing with this bribery and corruption issues in india so these are the two important dimensions that you have to see from governance point of view so these are the two subjects that i am covering here and from ethics point of view you have to see there is one chapter okay that chapter is directly probity in governance so there we will be studying about this topic called as corruption and you will be seeing different acts and different bodies 
and even one more dimension that I can add here is so what are this second ARC report recommendations to control this corruption in India clear so these all are the dimensions that you have to think I hope it is clear right so if you're understanding like how to connect the topics and how to relate with our syllabus please don't forget to hit the like button so your like button is very important for me it will be encouraging me a lot and one more thing here is so please do rate and review Rathod's IS in the Google so I will be giving you the link of Google rating and review of Rathod's IS in the description box so don't forget to give the rating and review because already you know that we are start, we have already started this offline branch and we started mentoring the students and I'm daily talking to around four to five students per day okay so if you're staying in Hyderabad and if you want to talk to me directly so you can come to office okay and you can talk to me directly and you can get free mentorship from me clear so for that yes we need your rating and review regarding this Rathor size so how your experience is and I want genuine rating and review because uh, other institutes they I should not say here but I am sharing the experience like other institutes they will be paying for the reviews and rating but we don't want to do that and even financially we are not much uh, able to spend on this rating and review so yes we are asking you the students who are watching this analysis and who and students who are the part of the different programs of Rathod Sayas so what is your experience so we need genuine review okay so that is one of my request and now let us see this topic in detail so let us see the notes part yes here you can see now how many judgment that is seven judge benches okay seven judge bench of supreme court declared that parliamentary privilege or immunity will not protect the legislators who take bribes to vote or speak in the parliament okay some people especially legislators they will be taking bribes to speak and to vote in the parliament or state legislative assemblies from criminal prosecution till now though they had immunity but now onwards so these people who are taking bribe or corruption especially to talk or to vote okay so they will be facing so they have to face criminal prosecution from now onwards so this is the thing which mainly said by the supreme court judgment so if you're talking about these privileges and immunities they are not gateways to claim exemptions from the general law of land so corruption in the bribery of members of legislature they will erode the foundations of parliamentary democracy so one important thing you have to remember is so if legislators who are going to make the laws whenever they are taking bribe and corruption to talk or to vote so that will be affecting this india's structure of parliamentary democracy so this is the thing which mainly said by supreme court and the anonymous verdict authored by Chief Justice of India overruled a 25 years old majority view of Supreme Court. So that laid down in this JMM bribery case judgment of 1998 that lawmakers who took bribes, they were immune to prosecution for corruption. And they can go ahead and vote or speak in the house as agreed. If they are taking even corruption and bribery to, to uh, speak and to give the oath so they can proceed but here this judgment has been overruled now so now any legislature like who are belonging to this parliament or who are belonging to the state legislative assemblies so if they are taking bribe and corruption now they have to face criminal proceedings so this is the gist of this article and now let us see what is this parliamentary privileges so they are nothing but in simple language they are the rights or they are immunities or exemptions so they will be enjoyed by the members of parliament and as well as state legislative assemblies in the house in their respective houses and their committees okay so these privileges are defined in article 105 of indian constitution under these privileges so here members of parliament they are exempted from any civil liability okay but not criminal liability 
for any statement made or act done in the course of their duties okay they are exempted from civil liabilities but not the criminal liabilities and these privileges they are claimed only when the person is a member of house and as soon as he or she is ending the member then these privileges they will be taken away or called off so these are the very important facts regarding this parliamentary privileges clear i hope it is very much clear right so is if you have any doubts so please let me know your doubt in the comment box so that i will be addressing your doubts in the next session for sure it's 100% Yeah, so this is the only one article which is important from your examination point of view, and even the city page. So most of the things are regarding the budget. So we are not going to see the budget of Delhi. So it is not at all necessary. And you can move on to the states page. So in states page, there is one important article which is regarding our nuclear technology. Okay. Yes, here you can see that important article. It is about our Prime Minister. He visits Karl Parkham Nuclear Power Plant. So I will tell you the dimensions, like what you have to see from this article point of view, and even I will be saying like how you can expect the question in both mains and prelims. So this article is talking about nuclear power plant. okay it is talking about nuclear power plant yeah so now let us see the dimension so this article is important from your gs paper 3 under science and technology so if you have completed your science and technology and even we can cover this topic under gs paper 3 under environment and ecology okay and even we can uh, also can think about this topic from gs paper 3 disaster management and especially gs paper 3 if you have the good command on current affairs you can gain good so if you are weak in current affairs you will be getting minimal marks in gs paper 2 and 3 2 and 3 yes current affairs based so from science and technology so there is a chapter called as energy so in this energy we will be studying about two types of energy non renewable and next one is renewable so we'll be reading like examples of each and every type of energy and also advantages disadvantages yeah and even from geography point of view also it is very important gs paper 1 geography so there we will be studying about location locations of important nuclear power plants in india so actually the present power plant which is present in state of tamil nadu it is very special it is very special because so it is indigenous it is indigenous fast breeder reactor that is fbr so it is very special and even in this science and technology we will be studying about india's nuclear program inp so in this india's nuclear program so we have three stages okay so first one is pressurized heavy water okay reactor pressurized heavy water reactor and next one is second stage is fast breeder reactor so this indigenous nuclear power plant is based on this fast breeder reactor and third one is thorium based reactor okay so this is the three pronged indian nuclear program okay you have to see what is this first stage second stage and third stage so what are the developments in these three stages it is very important so from this area also you can get a question and from geography point of view locations yes here how can you expect the questions like they will be giving you consider the following pairs so in the first pair name and the state and second name and states and like that they will be asking you identify the current pairs and only one pair two pairs three pairs like that so in that way you can get a question 
So for that you have to know the important nuclear power plants in India and their locations. And from environment and ecology point of view, you can see like what are the advantages of what this nuclear power plants. Okay, so if you are moving towards renewable energy sources, so what will be the advantages? And you can see even carbon neutrality by 2070 target will be achieved whenever there is transition of our energy sources. And from disaster management point of view, you have to remember this Chernobyl, Chernobyl nuclear power plant tragedy. Or we can also call it as nuclear disaster. And this Chernobyl nuclear disaster is in news recently. So please let me know why because number of times we discussed. So what is the reason why this Chernobyl nuclear tragedy is in news? And there is a high chance of getting mains question this year regarding this power plants, nuclear power plants. So these all are the dimensions and I also explained you like where you can get the question. Right? I hope it is very much clear. If it is clear, hit the like button and please do give rating and review in the Google. Don't forget this because it will be encouraging me a lot. And now let us see the notes part. So if you see context, context is nothing but the meaning is why it is in use. So why it is in use? Our Prime Minister, he witnessed the commencement of core loading. So it is India's first indigenous fast breeder reactor so with a capacity of 5 mega okay so 5 mwe in kalapakam so it is located in state of tamil nadu so if you see the details which are given in this article the first and the foremost thing here is india has developed comprehensive capabilities spanning the entire spectrum of nuclear fuel cycle so india is moving forward not only the space sector but even the nuclear power sector also we are moving forward. So government approved in 2003 that is the creation of Bhavani that is Bharatiya Nabhoika Vidyut Nigam Limited. So it, it is mainly approved to operate India's most advanced nuclear reactor prototype fast breeder reactor. So to come up with this fast breeder reactor in 2003 itself India approved, that is government of India approved for the creation of this Bhavani. So if you move on here, this fast breeder reactor which has been successfully and fully designed and constructed indigenously by this Bhavani and about 200 Indian industries, they help it and India will be the second country after Russia to have this commercial operating fast breeder reactor so in this way it is also one important record that we are going to break in this nuclear power sector so we're talking about what is this prototype fast breeder reactor so it is having the capacity of 500 mwe and it is one of the reactor presently constructed at this madras autonomic power station in this kalpakam in india so actually Indira Gandhi Center for Autonomic Research, it is a responsible organization for the designing of this reactor and the facility which builds on the decades of experience which gained from operating the lower power fast breeder reactor. And if you are talking about this Kalpakam design which is, used, which is going to use uranium 238 and by using this uranium 238 we are breeding plutonium in a sodium cooled fast reactor design so here you have to see like we are using sodium here okay and one more ex advantage of this fast build reactor is so what are the amount of the fuel that is required that is taking so it will be generating more okay so this is one advantage of this fast breeder reactor and i want to give you one main question like give an account of the growth and development of nuclear science and technology in India and what is the advantage of fast breeder reactor program in India okay try to write answer so don't leave this question so try to write so if you start writing then only you can improve 
and mains is a ball game so if you are not writing mains means you will be out of the game clear yeah now let us move on to this topic and the topic in our editorial page so this is very interesting so i got lots and lots of points here and it is talking about russia north korea ties so actually please excuse me so i thought of including map of north korea but unfortunately i forgot okay so here this is china part okay like this and here we have this russia so here we have like this north korea this is south korea so many students they are thinking that this north korea is sharing boundary with only china but there is a very little boundary okay i will change the color of pen so that you can see so there is a very little boundary which is sharing with russia as well so north korea is sharing boundary with china and as well as russia so now i will be saying geopolitics okay let us discuss the story what is happening so this is our india okay so this is indian ocean part this is bay of bengal okay so here we have many countries okay like this and here we have arabian so this, so this is a just schematic diagram i want to show how the relationship between india and russia they are going to change because of this china and north korea okay so let us forget everything and focus on this article with a very fresh mind so that you will understand what is happening across the world so here on one side we have india and one side we have china and we have russia okay correct yes so which are the friends of india so friends i am writing friends with this white color pen so friends are normally we have friends like russia so we have friends like us we have friends like uk okay so leave pakistan leave maldives and with bangladesh also okay we are having close relations and even nepal also we are having good relations but nowadays they are moving so i will be showing that as well and with bhutan also we are having a good relations and with myanmar we had a good relations but nowadays we are having some issues so these are the friendly nations so let me change the pen again so nowadays this nepal bhutan and bangladesh they are moving towards china okay and even you can add about maldives so earlier because of this changing of government now the present government which is in power in maldives so they are moving towards china right so even chinese ship it is closely coming towards this maldives and maldives said that yes we are going to return back the choppers that is gifted by india so everything the relations are up and down now and here if you see let us see the friends of china okay friends of china so all weather friend pakistan is friend and even sri lanka is also friend because of this infrastructure projects but even though india is helping sri lanka to get out of this debt trap that is another issue and even china is having this north korea north korea is also friend of china and even russia is also friend of china so now it is there is increasing of ties and even what happened so china came up with this policy called as expansionist aggressive policy china is using this aggressive policy so that it wants to increase its territorial extent okay so this is the thing which is happening now so now let us move on to another dimension so we have india we have china russia and north korea so if you see russia which is having war with ukraine okay russia is having war with ukraine and it is 
around two and a half years russia started attacking this ukraine and ukraine is getting help from western countries like us and as well as and european countries it is getting help okay russia is also constantly attacking ukraine and it is getting help from north korea north korea is helping russia why why north korea is helping russia because of common objectives so because of common objectives here north korea is helping russia so common objective is to counter usa so us is the common enemy of north korea and russia so how north korea is helping russia and how this russia is helping north korea so north korea is helping russia by giving defense related equipment by providing defense related equipment and north korea is also getting help from russia in the form of food so they are getting food or food security of north korea is dependent on this russia and not only this but now one thing which is new which is happening now is so these three countries china russia and north korea they are having agreement so whenever russia is moving towards china north korea is moving towards russia everything so it will be having impact on india obviously because china is neighboring country of india so with this china we are having issue at this line of actual control and china is building uh, building border villages to occupy most of the areas of india and because of this chinese expansionist policy like string of pearls and nine dash plan which is affecting india's position in this indo pacific region as so, i know so these are the some important dynamics that you have to think about and we are going to see about russia north korea relations and about this russia north korea and china agreement and we are going to see like so what will be the impact on interest of india i hope it is very much clear right so if you understand in things hit the like button and please do give google rating and review so i'm constantly asking because it is very important to us yeah now let us see this article in detail so let us see what author wants to say here so what happened in the middle of the series of actions that are fueling the tensions so there is increasing of tensions in this korean peninsula so korean peninsula includes north korea and south korea and north korea and south korea they are enemies okay so north korea is supported by russia and south korea is supported by usa okay this is very important and because of increasing of tensions in this korean peninsula including abandoning of decades of long unification goal with with this you let us nothing but south korea so now what happens so rather than these two coming up with peace but this north korea it is moving towards russia so this is the thing which mainly said and why it is a news because russian president is expected to visit this north korea once again in 2024 and both countries you are going to have the summit and they are going to sign the important deals so because of this russia north korea relations is news so with 2023 having been a year with increasing of bilateral ties between russia and north korea so it is sort of the breakthrough year for the two countries that i can see so even russia russian made car which mainly used by this putin so like that the similar car had been gifted to this north korea leader so it is also one thing that we can see like so they are improving their relations and if you are talking about ties improving of ties and uh, greater collaboration between this russia and north korea is going on so first important thing here is two nations they maintain diplomatic ties during cold war era okay cold war era is is around 1960s so from this 1960s onwards north korea and russia they are having the good relations and they shared lot of ideological affinities because 
both is north korea and russia they are communist countries and relations between moscow and this north korea experienced fluctuations in this geopolitical landscape in the recent years there has been a noticeable warming ties between this russia and north korea and even it is manifesting itself in diplomatic engagements and even they are increased the strategic collaborations with this north korea and actually what happened north korea started helping russia in this providing of key arms munitions artillery shells and other conventional weaponry okay so here to fight against ukraine so russia is getting help from this north korea and reports are also suggesting that the two countries they had discussed like cooperation in this sensitive areas but they are not disclosing those sensitive areas like where they had discussions and next one here is there are also talks of trilateral naval exercise like again china is entered here and they want to come up with the naval exercise okay but it is not confirmed so the details had not been released public so russia has emerged as a potential savior of development in the sectors like energy sector transportation sector so these are the issues which mainly faced by this north korea and russia is helping this north korea regarding this issues and even regarding the food shortage as well so in this way here so they are also coming with development of infrastructure projects like rajin kasan railway link so it is linking russia with this north korea so in this way here they are trying to improve this economic cooperation between north korea and russia and even energy is also one important factor that is linking these two countries so energy collaboration has also formed another crucial aspect of partnership between russia and north korea because it is a key supplier of fuel to this north korea russia is one of the key supplier of energy and even so they are having some agreements to further improve their cooperation in this energy sector and not only this even the utility of a deal such as this is undeniable though as moscow needs arms to sustain because Rush, uh, because of this russia ukraine conflict ukraine is getting help from this western countries european countries so if russia is not getting help from any other country so how it will be sustaining no right so it needs some help so that help it is getting from this north korea so it is not only the data but even satellite images they track a significant increase in the freight traffic at this border between north korea and as well as russia okay so there is transfers of ammunition to russia which is happening across this north korea and russia border and even one more common factor between this north korea and russia relation is usa okay so developments in 2023 are indications thus far in 2024 point to solidification of bilateral ties between russia and north korea with both the countries they are having found in incentive collaborations in each other and this partnership forged amid common challenges and also shared strategic objectives has far reaching implications for regional stability and global geopolitics so with this collaboration between these two countries okay like north korea and russia so it is going to have impact on regional stability and as well as global geopolitics and as both nations they deepen their engagement and cooperation across various sectors so their relationship is likely to exert a significant influence on the dynamics of the korean peninsula and even broader north east asian region so russia north korea ties they represent a notable development in the geopolitical landscape with ramifications that extend beyond the immediate bilateral relationship so this is about this topic and next topic it is about wto 13th ministerial conference so this article is at most important so i will tell you the dimensions that you have to think so this article is talking about world trade organization yeah especially there are many beginners 
so you need to know why this world trade organization came into picture so now we are in a globalized era so if you are talking about india so in india in 1991 we made some economic reforms in 1991 we came up with this economic reforms like lpg liberalization privatization globalization okay liberalization privatization globalization so these are the economic reforms we came in india in 1991 clear so what is the meaning of globalization why we need globalization so if we are taking this country one and we have another country and we have another country so each and every country is not self sufficient some countries are having huge resources some countries are having good water facilities and some countries they are having good energy okay good technology like that so because of this in this era in this 21st century so each and every country they have to depend upon another countries to get the things that they need to satisfy the needs of the people and aspirations of the people yes one country need to be dependent on another country for sure so here yes whenever one country is dependent on another country so if there are any issues are happening between the trade so we need a multilateral organization to resolve those issues so because of this we came up with this establishment of world trade organization so this is the thing and one more important dimensions you can think like so there is decreased relevance okay there is decreased relevance of this multi multi organizations multinational organizations or we can say like not only really wto but other organizations like united nations security council united nations and world health organizations so like that what are the multinational organizations we have or multilateral organizations so those organizations they had decreased their relevance because because of some factors the first one is because of protectionism so this concept is very much relevant with this wto so one important reason why this decreasing relevance of this wto is protectionism okay so they each and every country they want to protect their domestic industries so if they want to protect their domestic industries they are increasing tariff and these are the issues which are not dealing by this wto efficiently now so because of this you can say like there is decreased relevance and even during this covid 19 era so there is a huge failure of this wto happen because of lack of supply chain okay so i can say like because of supply chain irregularities why because each and every country came up with shutdown of their national borders okay so because of this supply chain restrictions or supply chain irregularities so we can say like the efficiency of this wto had been decreased and why we are talking about this wto now why it is in news because of 13th ministerial conference and you have to see like what or the highlights and what or the challenges and i want to give you even one main question regarding this wto and i want to make you understand like how upsc is going to ask question from this area clear if you are understanding please hit the like button and please do rate and review in the google the link is given in description box okay don't forget this yeah i am asking only this favor from you so if you are doing the favor and if you are encouraging me and i will promise you that we are going to come up with a much important and interesting content so that will helpful to clear your upsc for sure yeah now let us see this topic why it is in news the latest meeting of wto that is world trade organization came up with apex decision making body apex decision making came up with the meeting and they said that there is little progress on key issues so there are some key issues which are affecting the global trade so on those topics they had discussions 
So now let us see what are the positive outcomes. So they talked about tariff moratorium. And now in this meeting, they extended this tariff moratorium for two more years. So this is one positive outcome. Like India, Indonesia, South Africa. So they had signaled their opposition to renewing this e-commerce moratorium. But supported in the end. Okay, but finally even India, Indonesia and South Africa also supported this two years of extension of tariff moratorium. And next one is strengthening of multilateral trading system. So the members of this WTO, they pledged to uphold and to enhance the capacity of this multilateral trading system. Okay, so these are the two important positive outcomes and there are a number of challenges they remain unanswered in this meet. The first one is US obstructionism in WTO. The appointment of new members of this appellate body has unilaterally blocked by US and this board is supposed to be reformed by 2024 but this deadline already had been missed and there is nothing much discussion on this members of appellate body. And next one is regarding fishery subsidies, especially developing countries and the countries which are having the coastline. So most of the people, they're dependent on this fishing. It, it is like their livelihood, right? So developing countries like Brazil emphasized that their commitment to discussion on this fishery subsidies as West attempted to ban such subsidies. So Western countries said, 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 they said that we have to ban this fishery subsidies. And they highlighted about the importance of resolving the issue to advance sustainable fishing practices globally. But this issue is also not had been addressed. And even from Indian side, we have one important cause of concern that is food security. Because even you know that India is the topmost. Okay. So even if you are coming up with the data of this census, we will be like 100% sure that we will be the topmost populous country in the world. So this is the thing which even said by United Nations Population Prospects Report. So here because of high huge amount of population, so even government of India has a responsibility to ensure food security. And even we have to att attain this sustainable development goals by 2030. And this one important sustainable development goal is zero hunger. So if you want to achieve that, we need to focus on this food security. So India also urged, so make petitions like we need a permanent solution to public stockholding issue so that we can ensure food security in our country. So India also stated that resolving the pending issues of public stockholding is a crucial for achieving this food security and improving the livelihoods of, mi of million of people. But here this issue is also had not been addressed. So these are the some challenges which had not been addressed in this 13th ministerial meet. And now I want to give you one question that is about discuss the outcomes. So I said two outcomes, you can directly write those two outcomes and the challenges. I already said about three challenges, you can write those from this WTO organization 13th ministerial conference meet which held in Abu Dhabi. So you can get a question like if you are preparing for other competitive examinations, so this world, uh, world trade organization is very important, right? So there you can get question like recently 13th ministerial meet held in which place? That is in Abu Dhabi. Okay, clear? Yeah, now let us see next topic. It is about the status of India's nuclear program. So this topic is important from your science and technology. And I already gave you the dimensions what you have to read. So let us see only this gist part so that we will be completing our topic. So why is the news in Ma on March 19, oh sorry, on March 4th. So Prime Minister witnessed the start of the process of core loading the indigenous prototype fast breeder reactor at Madras Atomic Power Station in this Kalpakam in Tamil Nadu. So this is prototype FBR, that is fast breeder reactor. So this fast breeder reactor is a machine that produce more nuclear fuel than it consumes. So how much amount of the fuel it is consuming? So it will be releasing more energy than it is consuming. So its core loading event is being held as a milestone, okay? Because 
operalization operation of this operal operationalization of this proto okay prototyping of this fast feeder reactor so that will mark the start of the stage 2 of india's three stage nuclear power program so i said about these three stages and this fast feeder reactor is the second stage and this fast feeder reactor in india has been associated with numerous delays and caused overruns broken promises and has acquired many critics so these are the challenges of this second stage of nuclear development in india okay so these are the very important articles that appeared in our today's hindu newspaper i hope it is very much clear right so what are the dimensions i said so please work on those dimensions so that it can improve your knowledge so in this way you will be covering both static and dynamic so this is the way to prepare for competitive examination so if you prepare in this way for at least 1 to 1 and a half years then i can 100% i can give you assurance of 100% that you are going to clear this upsc for sure so it is my promise okay so even if you are if you are preparing in this way and if you are not tracking upsc then you can come and ask me the question like i prepared in this way so why can't i clear upsc so this is the way Okay, so many students are missing this way like approach in preparing for UPSC examination. So if you are preparing this way, yes, of course you can clear UPSC for sure within a less amount of time and even within a very less attempts and you have to focus on even mains answering along with this. Okay, and now let us see some important articles. Okay, I discussed editorial page and even opened page also there is nothing much important. And I discussed this, yeah, there is one article. Here it is about a vaccine that prevents six cancers. So it is talking about HPV cancer because today March 4th is celebrated as International HPV Awareness Day. So HPV is a virus that is human papilloma virus. So this is the reason for this cervical cancer in India. So repeated infections of this HPV virus to the cervix of uterus of a woman causes cervical cancer. Okay, so here protecting women's health includes protecting the cervix, the lower most part of uterus with this HPV vaccination. So when you are taking this HPV vaccination before your sexual intercourse that had been started, like from 9 to 14 years of age, so which is the age which is decided by the government, then we can decrease the prevalence or we can prevent the cervical cancer in the future. Okay, 9 out of 10 women dying of several uh, cervical cancer, they live in lower and middle income countries. In India, cervical cancer is second most cancer after breast cancer. So because of this, this vaccine is very, very important. And we did lots of lots of times about this discussion and you can revise that. And here you can see one more article like over 1000 Indians crossed into UK illegal in 2023. So if you have time you can go through this article. And in this text and context I discussed about this India's nuclear program. And the news page I found nothing much important in our today's Hindu newspaper. So you can see, so most of the articles are political articles. So they will fetch you nothing. So don't waste your time. And here you can see very important topic. That is from your UPSC and even from your state service examinations point of view. Tried of spam or fraud calls, file a plaint on Chakshu. So my daughter name is Dishu. So that is Chakshu. Okay, so here... This article is saying that the Department of Telecom, Telecommunications launched one platform that is Chakshu. It is a portal that you can report fraud and spam calls. Okay. So this platform will allow users to report frauds related to bank account, payment wallet, SIMs, gas connections, electricity connections, KYC update, expiry, deactivation impersonation as government official for relative and sextortion so what happens 
normally in a day you will be getting around two to three spam calls or this fraud calls right so if you are tired of that you can place the complaint in this chakshu portal so you can remember this chakshu so you can get a question like recently chakshu is in news so it is an initiative of ministry of defense ministry of telecom ministry of women and uh, children development so like that you will be getting question or else chakshu portal is in news it is related to banking sector telecom sector so like that also you can expect the question so this chakshu it is the uh, it is mainly came up by department of telecommunications and it is a portal you can find this fraud and spam calls clear so this is very important and next one is uttarakhand cabinet not for ordinance to recover damage cost so just focus on this word ordinance so even in your lakshmi kant also you will be getting this topic of ordinance like president have this power and governors have this power and president have this power under article 123 of indian constitution and article 213 talks about the power of governor to issue ordinance so you have to see what is ordinance and in which provisions okay in which uh, areas we can have this ordinance and what happens in this ordinance and what is the maximum life of this everything so you have to know okay that's it that's all so these are the very important articles that appear in our today's hindu newspaper so by this i'm concluding i hope you enjoyed this lecture if you really like this class don't forget to hit the like button and please do share this class to your friends also and one more thing here is if you are from hyderabad or if you know your friends from hyderabad so please refer them to go to this rathod sai's offline branch to get mentorship Okay, and don't forget to rate and review Rathod Sai's in Google. And the link is given in the description box. So thank you so much for watching.